Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative. And I've got a new friend online. You know, he's from Maryland. I just, um, I was just going through my meetings today and I've got another one at two and this guy's at 9 a.m. You're out there, Vance, you're, is it an hour before? An hour ahead of you. You were an hour ahead of you. So that's 10 o'clock here. Okay, so you're a little more awake than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you got one of those Hollywood names. Well, you know, people confuse me with Van Morrison all the time, so. That, that's kind of what I, I guess that's where I came up with the Hollywood part. I'm looking at this and it's just, so it's Vance Morris, private eye. <laughs> <laughs> I go by Magic Brad because I don't want to get confused with the Brents and the Brandons and the Bryans and the other Brads. And so I, yep. and I started doing magic when I was a little kid and it kind of got me into self-employment and and from live events into online marketing because we have a pandemic going on. <laughs> I've heard. Oh, so everything's online these days. How long you lived out there in Maryland? Uh, I've been in Maryland, uh, let's see, 15 years. Whoa, deep roots. I got yeah, deep I mean, I've, I've lived up and down the East Coast. I uh, lived in Jersey, grew up there pretty much, and then uh, went to school in Massachusetts. And, then moved down to Orlando and lived there for 10 years working for the mouse and then moved back to Boston um, and then back down here to, uh, to the Maryland area. And I've been here yeah, probably about 15 years now. You ever stopped through Asheville, North Carolina on your way down back? Um, I've been through there before. Yes. Yeah, I, I, we lived up there for a couple of years trying to try something new, but we bounced back to Minneapolis. Gotcha. What I like about the East coasters, they tell like it is. <laughs> um, well, you know, Time is time is short, so if, you know, no sense beating around the bush. Exactly. So you're married and got kids and that kind of thing. Uh, all of the above, yep. Yeah. Um, got four kids. So I've got a, a senior in college, uh, recently graduated uh, high schooler, and then I have two younger ones, uh, fourteen and thirteen. Whoa, you've been a busy guy. Yeah, so it's a busy house, busy house. <laughs> Especially the move. So how many times did you move? Um, let's see. I remember in the course of two and a half years, I bought or and sold four homes. Um, so I have moved, yeah, probably at least eight times. Oh my God. I hate it. I'll never do it again. This is, I told my wife, I said, we're, we're staying here. Plant those roots. Yeah. I, I spent the first 53 years of my life in the same house. Oh, wow. And got married, moved to the suburbs, and then we spent a few years there and thought, wonder what it would be like in Asheville, North Carolina. So we went down there and came back to Minneapolis. So all right. But uh, yeah, I've got a friend thing. up in Minneapolis. He's a copywriter. Okay. Have you been yep. up here? Kevin Kevin Donlin. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually I was in Minneapolis um about two years ago, three years ago for a conference. Um beautiful city. It was and we got lucky because it was in late March, early April. And I guess that's kind of still winter ish for you guys. And yeah. um, we had just drop dead, gorgeous, 70 degrees every day, no humidity. It was beautiful. Yeah, there's a, a lot of people don't realize how many lakes we've got around here. We've got quite a lake system right around Minneapolis. Right. I know. It's a nice place to visit. And I like living <laughs> here too. So I see your uh, stuff Disneyfy your business there, and you said you work for the mouse. So I'm kind of assuming that it's kind of Disney related as far as the imagination or whatever. Can you share a little bit about the basics about your business and what? Yeah, um, you know, I was at Disney for ten years. I was a senior leader uh, when I left. Um, I worked at uh, that godforsaken place called Pleasure Island. Um, I don't know if you've been down there. Uh, it was Disney's failed attempt at uh, nighttime entertainment, booze, debauchery, scantily clad women, etc. Um, it's no longer there. It's now part of uh, the downtown Disney area. Um, I have, uh, it was New Year's Eve there every night. That was the theme of that uh, particular park. And so at last count, I had just almost 1,100 New Year's Eves under my belt. Um, and I really, um, so these days I, if I'm in bed by nine on New Year's Eve, I'm, I'm a happy guy. 
Um, so spent spent 10 years there. I um, created and operated a, a restaurant called Chef Mickey's. Uh, it was the number one character dining destination. It's where the characters mingle through the tables, um, do autographs and pictures and everything. Cool. And um, I took all of my Disney knowledge, everything that I learned there over just over a decade, and I packaged it up into um, my own process um, for improving I used to say improving customer service, um, but that was kind of nebulous and customer service, people get confused. Is that a department? Is that a, is that a program? Is that a computer thing or software? Yeah. Um, so now I call it disnifying um, the experience. Uh, so it's really improve it because we're, everything's a commodity these days. Right. Um, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, a dentist is a dentist is a dentist. Right. There's nothing that separates them. They, you know, they all kind of clean teeth. I, I imagine, I'm not a dentist, but I imagine there's only a couple of different ways to clean teeth. <laughs> um, so what would separate dentist right. A from dentist B from dentist C? The only thing that will separate it and we assume that they're all competent at their jobs. The only thing that would separate it is the experience that they provide in their office. Everything from how they answer the phone to how they greet you in the office to the, the waiting experience. Um, you know, we, we all have to wait. Uh, Disney has done phenomenal things with reducing the perception that you're waiting a long time. Right. <laughs> Most of yeah. those lines are two, three article, hours long. I read an article once What's about that? how, how customers at the airport were complaining because it took so long to get their luggage on the carousel. So all they mm -hmm. did was they routed the people around a little bit longer. There you go. And they, they had much better customer response. Yeah. It's the experience. So, I, so Disney it's, came up with this thing called line entertainment, so where they entertain you in line. Sometimes that's a physical feature where you can, you know, you're reading stuff or you're, if you're at the Haunted Mansion, you see the tombstones and everything, oh. uh, to having actual live characters um, walking through the lines, um, through yeah. providing drinks, um, you know, uh, there's that, interactive things now. We did that at the Minnesota State Fair for the French fry booth. There was they had huge lines and people were getting tired of line, standing in line, so they'd go to another place. So they hired us as entertainers, as a magician, a ventriloquist, mm -hmm. a juggler, and we'd work the line and kept people in the line. So that's exactly, exactly. It's um, you know, and people don't, yeah, people don't realize that you can do that anywhere. You know, if you have people waiting, um, you know, what can you do in your waiting room? Um, or if you're an online kind of uh, salesperson, what can you do in, you know, in the wait between the time they make the sale and the time they get the product um, to make that wait seem shorter? Um, you know, the dentist, I, actually I did, I worked with one dentist. Um, he calls himself, he's a, a pediatric dentist and he outfitted his entire office um, like uh, the pirate ship from Peter Pan. And he's got his, you know, assistants, they dress in pirate garb. He dresses in the whole thing with the, the wig, looks like Captain Hook. You know, they all go around saying, arg. Um, you know, it's really, it's a fully immersive. I mean, the TVs all around the office are playing Peter Pan. Um, you know, the chairs look like it. And he actually designed the chair you sit in looks like a rowboat. So he made a rowboat around the procedure chair. Um, it was just, you know, I mean, that's off the far end. Um, you know, you don't need to go through a lot of expense to, you know, say, wow your clients. So, so your business, are you, you help people create the concept? You actually do the implementation for them and things? Um, I do both. Um, you know, really, I, I ask questions to try and see what the person is about and really bring out the personality of the owner or the doctor. Um, you know, because what I think is not how what they might think. Um, so going through all that, like I, I, uh, in doing this pr process, um, I have a, uh, uh, an insurance company um, down, uh, down south and he loves rock and roll. So his whole office now has got gold records on the wall, guitars, you know, posters of, you know, Led Zeppelin and the That's Who perfect. and all these guys. Um, and he asks, um, or his uh, employees answer the phone in a specific way. Now, if you called up an insurance agent, you'd probably get, you know, thanks for calling Dave's Allstate. How can I help you? Right. <laughs> That's boring, you know, and it doesn't set you apart. His gang answers the phone. Thank you for calling Dave's Allstate, the agency that rocks. Now, 
that completely separates him from all the other insurance agents in totally. his town. And answering the phone that way does two things. One, it attracts people who want to do business with somebody who's fun and enjoyable, um, you know, as we assume a professional. Um, and it repels people from, you know, that could be just boring duds. I mean, you know, we don't like to do business with people we don't, we don't like. Um, so, because I mean, that's what your marketing is supposed to do. It attracts the people you want to do business yeah, with I've, and repels the people you don't want to do business with. I've got with. a friend up here um, in Minneapolis. He's a LinkedIn trainer, but there's a lot of LinkedIn trainers and he calls himself the LinkedIn rock star because he likes rock and roll. He's a there you go, yeah. He likes rock and cars. So that's his whole theme. And the cool thing about that is you're going to attract your ideal customer too, because they're going to resonate with you. You can talk about 55 Chevys and talk about yep. rock and roll and, you know, when you're, exactly. when you're saying that, like the dentist thing, my mind started going with the other types of businesses that are commonalities and how can you separate yourself and that might get lines. And I thought like right now restaurants are hurting, but it's going to eventually open up where they're going to start having lines again. And mm -hmm. not just the line in the restaurant, but what about the people that are in the parking lot and they go, oh my God, there's a line out the door. Let's go someplace else. I'll bet you could even work something out in the parking lot. And I was just thinking strolling magicians because that's my background. Yep. Strolling magicians working around the parking lot, doing magic in front of the cars and stuff, just to keep in the lot as the line gets moving through. Yep. And, you know, it really depends. I mean, you know, with, with COVID out there right now, some of the restaurants, um, you know, were allowed to have outdoor seating. Yeah. Well, one, one restaurant literally took their entire parking lot. They rented a whole bunch of tents or canopies drop them in the parking lot. And so people had to park somewhere else, but that was okay. And then they had their tables set up six feet apart out in the parking lot. Yep. So the restaurant still was able to operate and now they're serving in the parking lot. So if your liquor license lets you, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, have a cocktail waitress, work the parking lot. Um, so you, so your, your business is not just thinking outside the box. It's kind of thinking without the box, kind of really just kind of let's just break all the barriers and get creative mm -hmm. and figure out how to get your profits up. Right. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the other thing, too, is, is this, this can apply to your employees as well. So what kind of experience are you providing your employees? Um, I worked with a real estate broker last week um, who wanted to not really give his real estate agents, um, you know, stuff that they can jazz up their business or disnify their individual, um, you know, relationships, but he wanted to disnify the, the experience of the broker to the agents. So, you know, what do, you know, when they uh, come in the front door uh, for an interview uh, to become part of his agency, he's got his, you know, he bought one of those uh, marquees that lights up and, you know, welcome, you know, Dave Smith uh, for your interview. Um, if they get the job on the way out, there's a big sign that says, congratulations, our newest agent is Dave Smith. So really just trying to, what can they do within the office to make it a great experience for their employees. Well, that's a huge thing right now, the whole experiential marketing. It, it used to be like called event marketing and now it's about mm -hmm. creating an experience. And there, there's a whole um, industry of experiential marketing. The, uh, the uh, I forgot the organization is called, but there's an association. It's kind of like Exhibitor Magazine, a magician friend of mine created mm -hmm. that. And it's a sort of offshoot of that whole experiential kind of thing. And, um, I just jumped my train of thought here, but uh, theme restaurants are just a kind of a, a common thing. Um, what I've noticed is this new generation of people, kids, the millennials, if you will, it's about experiences for them. I don't care how many mm -hmm. features and buttons and cool things you got. I want to have an experience and feel it. So I can see what yep. you're talking about all the way from the hiring process. You create the culture all the way down to the close and the sale. So they get that that feeling of that. I believe that malls are going to turn more into experiential um, like conference centers as opposed to shopping right. centers. Yeah, I think I, I agree. I think a lot of commercial real estate is, uh, especially shopping malls are really going to, unless they're going to just mow them to the ground, um, are really going to have to pivot and offer something completely different. I mean, we have a shopping mall you know, 10 minutes from the house and 40% of the stores are gone. Just, well, we got you know. we got the Mall of America and it's for sale. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, but yeah, but Mall of America, that's an experience. I mean, they've got roller coasters and you know, you've got a rainforest cafe up there, I think, yeah. and other things. So yeah. Steven Schusler, you know that name? I'm sorry? Steven Schusler? 
You know yeah. that name? Yeah. Schuster Creative. He's a Minneapolis guy. Now he lives in Arizona, I think. Yeah, I know the name. Trying to, yeah. Where do I put why, why am I not placing it, though? Because he's the one that came up with the theme of Rainforest Cafe. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And, and multiple others with different uh, themes. Yeah, he sold uh, Rainforest, got picked up. Uh, I think Darden Restaurants bought them. I'm not sure, I think. And his, his office is just a few miles south of me, and it's all Schuster Creative. Across the street, there's a drive-in restaurant that he had that's all, you know, retro, and it's pretty cool. Right. I yeah, no, I had a contract go. with Rainforest. Um, I worked for them for six months. I opened up their uh, Disney locations, um, the, the one at um, Downtown Disney and then the one at Animal Kingdom. So, yeah, it was familiar? an interesting experience. Are you familiar with the Magic Castle in Hollywood? No, I'm not. You should check that out. That's all, all right. magic themed. It's an experience. You walk in and you, it's a private club, so you can't just get in by yourself. You got to have a, got to know somebody. And you go in there and show your card that you're a member. And then you walk over to the bookcase and there's an owl and you say open sesame and the bookcase opens up and there's a, a bar in there. And you oh, go neat. into the bar, you sit on the bar stools and you're having your cocktails or whatever. And one of the bar stools slowly goes down. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the night, you're kind of like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but it's got all sorts of experiences like that. Three different right. computers in there. And it's... I yeah, Disney watched. did that actually at the uh, at Pleasure Island. There was a club called the Adventurers Club, um, and they had all of the bar stools, you know, went up and down, and you know, and, and, you know, they had characters interacting. But you know, you'd think you know, I only had one beer. What the heck's going on? Well, it can be as simple as a, there was a club here called the Amalgamated, and what it was was it was the vibe was like a old uh, a mine, like a coal mine. So you okay. walked in, you pushed the button. And the, the thing shook around and lights, and you can see the lights passing by like you're going somewhere, but you weren't really. Right. Then it opens up and you walk into the restaurant. It felt like you were oh, very cool. mine shaft. So That's very cool. Yeah, and I think you can do a lot of that stuff. You know, it doesn't have to be huge business. Like with your customer, what, what is your ideal target of kind of money? With, with small business? Mid yeah, I mean, I don't work with you know, Xerox or IBM or, well, actually they're probably all out of business, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't work with the big, uh, the big mag daddies. Um, you know, I'm, you know, if you're a, uh, you know, a dental office and you've got either one or 10 offices, um, you know, those are the kind of businesses, uh, you know, physical therapists. Owner uh, operator kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. Owner operator, um, I like you know, up to a small company that's, you know, maybe got, you know, maybe two, three, 400 employees. Um, I worked with uh, some retirement communities up in Connecticut. They had, you know, prop they had three properties. Um, so yeah, it's, it's um, really anybody that, you know, I, I work primarily with the owner um, or the doctor because if that person's not bought in, then, you know, you can't just send your marketing manager or your ops manager to work with me because then they have to go back and try to explain it to the boss. Exactly. That's um, why the I like boss working. has got to be 100% engaged in the process. That's why I like working with the owner operator because you go through that red tape and stuff. It's just got to resell it and it's, it right. uses a lot in the translation. So it's good to know that because when I'm doing the marketing for this, I like to use the keywords like, you know, business owner, owner operator, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so when people see the video, it's the right people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't want to do these too long because there is that commonality of time, 24 hours in a day. That's all we got. And that's uh, right. People can only go surfing around on the internet so long. So I keep these kind of short so they get to know who you are and what you do. Do you have anything Fantastic. you can uh, offer anybody? Do you have like a free download or uh, maybe a. Yeah, a I do. Um, to... Yeah, if you go to my website, deliverservicenow.com, uh, it's deliverservicenow.com, uh, there is a uh, download and it's a blueprint to begin Disneyfying your business. Um, my process is wrapped around seven, uh, what I call magic keys, and um, you get an introduction to each of them. And if you actually follow just this free blueprint, um, you're gonna, your, your, client, your current clients are gonna be absolutely amazed. So, um, you know, you don't even have to spend money to, to start Disneyfying your business. I like that. I like the number seven and I like the magic and I like the concept of a key. It kind of opens yeah. up opportunity. I like that. Well, there you go. Well, cool. This has been fun.
I appreciate you having me on. This has been great, Mr. Magic Brand. If you have other things happening, like a new launch or something, or a new conceptual or something, you want to do another one of these down the road, I'm always for it because the concept of synergy, one plus one equals 111. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it does. Um, actually, yeah, I'm launching um, my flagship product um, in July. Um, and so I'm working with a couple of joint venture partners um, and affiliates uh, to launch that. And if that's something that, uh, you know, you want to do, I'd, I'd be more than happy to um, send you some details and, and we, can, um, we can go from there. Yeah, whatever that product is. I mean, July's coming real quick. Why don't you go on to my Synergy, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> MySynergyCafe.com, reschedule another one, and let's talk about that new project. Okay, great. Specifically. Perfect. Great. Well, Vance, appreciate you taking the time and disnifying my brain. I, I got all sorts of ideas <laughs> flowing through. It's that uh, entrepreneurial ADD looking for something to do, you know, that creativity. Yep, thing. yep. Okay, you enjoy the rest of the day. I'll get this up. Thank you very much. I so. appreciate you having me on. Thanks. Peace. All right, bye-bye.